Hello, my name is Pavel Martinov and I welcome you on my YouTube channel. Today in this video for beginners, we will speak about stages of chess game and about chess game principles in general. What is a chess game? Which stages chess game have? How to play there? What to do in the chess game? All this you will catch from my video. So let's start. So, in general, in chess game, we have three stages. Opening, middle game, and end game. Let's go through all the stages and I will try to describe and explain main principles of chess fight on these stages. The first one is opening, it's just the beginning of the game. And in the beginning of the game, we have several key principles. First of all, we need to fight for center. The center is these four squares, e4, d4, d5, and e5. And at the same time, the second principle is to develop the pieces, because you need to bring them to the game to create a nice play in the middle game. Firstly, we need to pay attention on developing light pieces, such as knight and bishop. Secondly, we need to pay attention for the castle, and only after this, we need to pay attention for uh, such pieces like queen and rooks. And we will see in this following example, all three stages and we'll try to fill the principles. Okay, let's continue. E5. Of course, black can try to make some treatments to the pawn, but as I said before, first of all, we need to fight with this for the center and it's better to fight with the pawn because here this knight is fighting for the center because he creating a treatments on E4 pawn. But after E5 here, here, we can see that white build up a nice center and they want to push c4 somewhere and this knight is under attack. And uh, this kind of defense I don't recommend for uh, uh, beginners because uh, it's for more intermediate players. Uh, first of all, try to follow the basic principles of chess. e5. We have a classical opening on the board, the Italian game, one of like the most classical opening in the chess game. And let's see the following example. So both sides are fight for the center. I mean, like the pawns are here and both sides wants to finish the development and mega castles. So let's see how it was. And now we can see that white finished the development because they connected the rooks between each other and actually white are quite close to start a middle game so the middle game starting when the all pieces are developed and um, we will see that black wants to make the same thing h6 to avoid this pin we don't need to forget about tactical tricks because for instance because after queen e7 we can see that this pin, I mean the g5 bishop and queen on e7 is really dangerous. After knight d5, black can't take on d5 because of losing queen. So this way they need to go back and somewhere white will destroy the pawn structure. They will force the g pawn to come to f6 and with destroyed king side, uh, it will be really hard for black to play and the king won't be safe. So... That's why h6 played. So, white played h3 to avoid bishop g4 somewhere with the pin and following knight d4. Rook f8. And here we can say that the opening is really finished for both sides and we left for the middle game. What is the key thing about the middle game? The key thing is the plan. So when you're going to the middle game, you need to have a plan what to do and how to do it. So what can be the plan here in this position for white? Actually, white played a3 because they decided to start an attack on the queen side, following b4 and b5 somewhere, maybe connecting the a pawn, how it was actually in the game. So better to have a bad plan even than don't to have plan at all because when you're playing without a plan you're playing for nothing you don't have a goals so that's why it's really important to create a plan in the middle game it's a really uh, big topic how to create a plan where to play on which side i mean like king side 
queen side or center we will discuss it more in our videos on my youtube channel so subscribe to it so in this game white following their plan to push a4 and a5 black wants to create some counterplay in the center they want to exchange bishops and push the d pawn so another one good bro if you face the attack on the flank the best tool is to have a counter attack in the center that's what black wants to do actually let's see how it was in the game take take a4 a6 be careful because white wanted to play a5 winning a bishop on b6 take take some exchanges white wants to avoid the spin from the bishop on d4 and d5 so black finally made their counterplay in the center and we can see that it's lots of exchanges right now b6 a tactical trick because it's a double attack on c7 and d5 never forget about the tactic you always need to pay attention for the geometry of the position just not to lose the material somewhere or some even hard uh, attack to a king so take take rook a2 defending the c pawn and the position actually here is quite equal queen c6 black wants to follow e4 they have another plan because their rooks are in the center they want to open the center files to have a space for their rooks bishop e3 e4 and massive exchanges again takes takes queen f3 here takes takes queen f3 so now we can see that we can trade a queens and after trading a queens we are going to the end game so this is the rooks end game actually in game in end game we have a basic principles like the king is a really important piece in the end game so it's really hard to um, make a checkmate in the end game because queens disappeared so that's why king needs to go to the center to support the army it's like one of the main key principles of the end game that the king needs to be active and needs to be in the center because from the central position he can follow to the all flanks like king side or queen side to connect with other pieces so the other uh, thing about the end game that all you pieces need to be really well placed uh and need to be connected between each other because that's not a big amount of the pieces on the board and that's why you need to catch the connection between them so actually this game i mean like this end game is quite equal we will see it g6 rook a7 here and now if black wants to connect the rook to the game they face rook a7 back they need to defend the f7 pawn and after this game this game ends to a draw because it's a big repeat of the moves so the game ended this game ended in draw i hope that you will win all your games in all your tournaments so in this video we spoke about general principles of chess and we learn about three stages of chess opening middle game and end game of course it was a short excursion to the stages of a chess game if you want to learn more about chess stay in my youtube channel subscribe to it and visit pavelchess.com and work to chess with me